Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all for leadership and team development speaker Joe Woodley, and this is another key moments for faith. Thank you so much for joining me on today's broadcast. Before we go any further, make sure you click on the subscribe button down at the bottom of the screen. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, like other videos on this channel, comment and share. Share with your friends, your family, your neighbors, the guy down the street around the corner, and even your enemies. And they may just happen to become your friend. Also, take a look at the really awesome resources that are down in the description box. You're certainly sure to find something to help you on this journey we call faith. Guys, today I want to talk to you from this topic. Even the tax collectors need to know Jesus. Even the tax collectors need to know Jesus. Now, during the time of Jesus, when he walked the earth, the tax collector was reviled and hated by many individuals, particularly those who were in the elite class of Jewish society. The tax collector was an extension of the Roman government. And as we know, the Roman government was a very oppressive regime. And so you can imagine being a tax collector and being reviled by the society that you're living in. Not only are you reviled by the society you're living in, but if you are a Jew, you may even be reviled by the very people that you're working for. So you're kind of in a no-win situation because nobody likes you and nobody wants to spend time with you and no one wants to associate with you because to associate with you would mean to devalue one's own reputation. But here comes Jesus and he meets a tax collector or rather he meets many tax collectors and he meets many sinners and he breaks up the systems that were in place at the time. He comes across a young man named Levi, whom we now know as Matthew. He comes across this young man named Levi, who is a tax collector. And Jesus sees that this young man is in need of something. He's in need of a savior, in need, in need of a transformation. He's in need of a spiritual blood transfusion. And Jesus sees him in his undesirable state. He sees him in his reviled state and takes a look and with eyes of compassion says, you need to know me too. You have value, you have worth. Uh, I know the society has turned its back on you. No one wants to hang out with you, but I want you to come hang out with me. I want to spend time with you and I want you to spend time with me. I want you to get to know me and I want to get to know you because there is indeed a plan for your life and it doesn't matter what they're saying about you. I know that they don't like you. I know that they don't want to spend time with you. I know that they hate your guts, but the father in heaven still loves you and he sees beyond all of your faults. Wow, what a powerful message to demonstrate just how much tax collectors were reviled. In Mark, the second chapter, the tax collector and the sinner are included in the same sentence. They're almost synonymous with one another as if they are offending the very nature of who God is. He sees beyond those faults. He sees beyond their transgressions. He sees beyond their iniquities and still yet welcomes them in and says, come, get to know me and let me get to know who you are. Wow, how familiar is this story to the world that we're in today? Many believers will not associate with anyone who does not think the way they think, who does not act the way they act, who does not talk the way they talk, who does not live the way that we live. We don't want to associate with them whatsoever. We find ourselves only wanting to be around other believers. We spend time preaching to the choir. You know, it's very easy to preach to those who already believe what you believe. But Jesus is calling on us to go beyond just spending time with those who are always in agreement with us. The, the very word evangelism 
and to be an evangelist means that we are to go out and to reach those who don't think like us, who don't act like us, who don't speak like us. And how do we propose, how do we propose to bring new believers into the body if we are unwilling to go out and touch the lives of those who are lost, those who don't know Jesus? Our responsibility as believers is to introduce the non-believer to Jesus, us who are super sanctified believers or offended at seeing any believer spend time with someone who is a non-believer or someone who may hold a different opinion on various issues. We question each other's godliness, our character and the integrity. We challenge that individual and say, how could you spend so much time with that person over there? How could you spend so much time investing in a person's life and they don't even know who the Lord is? In just the same way that Jesus dealt with those questions during his day and during his time when he walked the earth, those same issues arise today where many of the holiest don't see a need for the undesirables. We step over them, we walk over them, we won't approach them, we won't engage them. But here in these scriptures, we find that Jesus is supping with those who are undesirables. He's spending time with them. He's engaging them. Let's see here what the reaction is of the religious elites during his day. In Mark, second chapter, verse 14, it says, as he was passing by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting in the tax collector's booth. Who is Levi again? He's Matthew. And he said to him, follow me as my disciple. And then, of course, Levi gets up and he followed him. And he became a disciple of Jesus. And it happened that Jesus was reclining at the table in Levi's house. He's at Levi's house. He's He's in Levi's house chilling out the tax collector. Levi, the tax collector, the undesirable one. And many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples. The undesirables, the ones who were not being observant of the Jewish laws, the rules, the regulations. You know, you know how that is. I mean, think about the world we're in now or the Christendom as we have seen it throughout much of the world now. And the idea that you're gonna be in someone's house who's a non-believer and hanging out with them, boy, I tell you what, that gets people's blood boiling. How could you spend time with these individuals? They don't even know Jesus, but we're missing the point. It says then when the scribes when the scribes who were, they were part of the pharisaical uh, sect, they saw that Jesus was eating with the sinners and the tax collectors. Again, this is interesting that both of those are put together in the same sentence shows you how much the religious elite despised them. They asked his disciples, why does he eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? How could he eat with them? How dare he? He's, he's claiming to be a holy man. He's claiming to be a holy man, but he's eating with the tax collectors. He's eating with the, the, the sinners. He's talking to them. He's laughing with them. He's, he's investing in them. How could he do that? He's supposed to be holy. And when Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are healthy have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. You guys are so holy, you don't, you, don't, you don't need to spend time with me. You got it all together. I mean, after all, you, you've got it all. You got the law, you got all your rules, you got all your regulations, you got your policies, procedures, and protocols. You got all that stuff in place. You also, if you got all those things in place, why are you so angry and so upset with me spending time with these people, these undesirables? Why are you so upset that I would dare invest time in them? Why are you so upset that I would want to know them and that they would want to know me? 
Mm. Think about that. Think about that in accordance to the world that we're in today. Again, where many believers, when you go out and you spend time with the undesirables, the unwanted, those that society has cast away and cast down, and fingers get pointed, why would you want to spend time with them, so much time with them? Why would you want to do that? You need to spend more time with your fellow brothers and sisters. And again, the Bible talks about not neglecting the assembly of believers, and we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to do that. But many of us spend so much time and all of our time preaching to the choir. And Jesus is saying, there's sick people who need to know me. They're spiritually sick. They don't know me. They need to be introduced to me. They need to know about the Savior. They need to know about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They need to be healed and restored. That's why he uses the analogy of the physician. You guys have received your healing. Why would you not want to see someone else healed? Why would you not want to see someone else restored? Why would you not want to see someone else set free? And so in this passage, we find Jesus challenging us. Those of us who have been set free, that we need to invest more of our time, our energies and our resources in introducing those who don't know the Father those who don't have a relationship with the Lord, introduce them to Jesus. The very people that we find to be detestable in many cases are the very ones that we need to be taking the message of Christ to, the tax collectors and the sinners. Those individuals that look at you and they're in need. They're in need of a savior. They're in need of knowing Jesus. So I want to challenge you guys. Maybe, maybe you've uh, lived for quite some time and, uh, you know, you're comfortable around other believers. I mean, it's easy to be comfortable around other believers. No one's going to challenge your thought processes. No one's going to oppose you. No one's going to present an, an opposing point of view. So it's easy to preach to the choir. You really want to know how much Holy Spirit you have. Trust me, you're going to get out. You're going to talk to some people who don't know the Lord, but need to know him. And Jesus is saying, is, I want to get to know these people. They need to know me, and I need to know them. We are the hand and feet of Jesus in the earth, my fellow brothers and sisters. And he wants to use us to introduce those who don't know him to who he is.